Whew. Another blustery day on the toadstead. This is, uh, I think it's New Year's Eve or the day before, I don't know. But anyway, we're close. But we'll show you what we got going on. That is a mess. <laughs> Sometimes you just get dealt a problem and you're going to get, uh, well, experimental. And that's what's going on here. So let's, uh, let's kind of get you clued in. This big, this is actually a 2x8 that a previous owner had, well, kind of ham-handedly stuck in there. And I'm assuming he did that because this crack right here, perhaps... Perhaps a sailor would eat a few too many cheeseburgers got up in there and broke it. But uh, that was his solution. Now what we're going to try and do is build a custom piece that's going to go up underneath here and be hidden. Now what we're going to try and do is make it out of this plywood. And what we've got is a lamination. It's, uh, it's basically 3 8 inch plywood, three of them laminated together and yeah we're using tight bond um i wanted to over bend it slightly so when i push it up inside it helps to not only uh give sh give better shape to the cabin top but puts it under compression that way uh it'll be stronger as time goes by now is you know regular plywood something i'd normally use in a boat no no but the simple truth is this is going to be completely, if it works, it's going to be completely encased in epoxy. Now, we'll, uh, we'll in a later video, we'll show you how things go, because we just got this done. In fact, there's, uh, there's Magpie hiding over there. We just, uh, we just finished struggling with this. Uh, we can see we have a strap coming down to the trailer of the boat, and there's actually two of them, but we had a failure on the other one and we had to figure out this looks a lot easier than it was it was a, it was a right pain in the butt and we think we've got it in a good spot to dry so what we're going to do after it dries it's about seven inches wide as you can see not only is there a crown which is why we're laminating but there's a cord you can see how this goes in and then back out so you've got not only a bend um, up and over like a rainbow, but you've got one that bends in sideways. Now we're certainly not going to make a, a compound bend, but what we're going to do, or what we're trying to do, is to make this wide laminate. Now, if this works out and dries the way I hope it will, we'll actually be able to cut this shape into this board, this laminate, and it being so wide, it should work out. Um, will I trim this part off? I do not know. Um, that's going to come in the fitting. But we do quite a bit of laminating around here. And I'm going to show you another one real, real quick that uh, actually messed up on, had to fix. And we'll give you an idea about that. It goes, you look up in front, you can see a bulkhead right up in there. It's a solid bulkhead. It's got some flotation in it. And perhaps our same cheeseburger loaded sailor spent a little bit too much time bouncing right here. Now, if, I don't know if you can see the very fine surface crack in the, uh, in the gel coat, but this forward part of the cabin is down about half an inch further than it should be. So our solution is this laminate right here. And that's just dry bent laminated pine. Um, I use an old I keep several of these kind of molds around. I should have taken a, taken a picture of it while it was in the mold. But you can see where the holes are cut for the clamps. <coughs> and you can use your imagination. These are basically just pieces of pine cut into just a little over a sixteenth of an inch strips. Glue's put on them and they're bent over that mold using clamps. Just all the way around whatever it takes. Now the only thing I made a mistake on here is I actually over bent it. So this is, these, this is not a perfect 90, which is what it needs to be. So again, this piece is going, when it's all done, this is going to be completely encapsulated in um, fiberglass resin. 
So it's essentially gonna be a plastic piece, plastic coated waterproof piece when it's done. So right now, what I did because it's a, not a 90, you can actually see right there how if it were a perfect 90, it being clamped to the fence, it'd be the same, it'd be parallel to this line on the table saw, and it's not, it's actually So I've added another laminate and we'll trim this. Once it's all dried, we'll trim, and this part will end up being bolted to the bulkhead, and this part will end up up underneath the deck, and that'll square away and strengthen this part of the deck. The, where, the, where the cabin top, where the deck and the cabin top meet is just really, really strong, but there's not much holding it from bouncing. That piece we're making will do that. We won't have any problem. Now, what else have we already got done? Well, there's some rough-in stuff. We can get uh, a little drop light. There's not much light at this end of the boat. The, uh, once we focus, that's the outboard motor well. Had to completely rebuild it. It was junk. And uh, that is the very rough in there. A lot of, lot of uh, finished sand work to make that to get that squared away and make it look good. But that's all encapsulated wood. That should never ever go away. <laughs> and then we had some left over, so some of the, uh, the screw holes. You can see their blob over here. This is just thickened epoxy. And we're using West System. That's pretty much all I use. I, I really prefer West System. Been using it for 20, 30 years. It's fine. So, this is where we are on the boat. You can see some pieces cut here. The original design had, this was, this was plywood in here, and that's Spanish cedar. And we've got pieces cut that will be, enca again, encapsulated in epoxy. They slide into here. And once they're slid in there, screwed, clamped, thickened epoxy, done. And I'm not gonna go too much more into what else we're gonna do, except to say we think we come up with a really cool idea for doing the seats. Now, any of you who are watching this who are O'Day sailors, we are still trying to date this boat. We think we've got it narrowed down to the late 50s, um, 1960. Uh, there are no hull numbers, there are, there's nothing. There, we, the, only, the closest thing we could find to any identifiers was it appears that under the paint, in this area, somebody had written something in, if they had magic markers in the, in the late 50s, early uh, 60s, I don't know. But some, there, there appears to be some writing there, but we haven't been able to discern it. The, uh, <coughs> pardon me, uh, one of the really odd things about this boat is the backing on the seats. And most of the day sailors seem to have this area open all the way to the outside of the hull. But as you can see, not these aren't. These are actually boxes that I'm going to assume are filled with flotation. When I get ready to build the seats, then we're going to clean out some of the, you know, the holes from the original seats. And we'll take a peek back there and see what's back there. But if there isn't flotation and I end up having to open them up, there will be. So any of you day sailor types who know about a lot about the early years of these boats, we'd sure like to know. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna let that dry. Like I said, uh, we had just got that squared away a few minutes before we started shooting video. And uh, hopefully in the next video, we'll be actually installing all this stuff, trimming and messing about. But thanks a lot for coming along. This project's a, a slow one. We only work on it when we have time and uh, when we have materials, so. Thanks a lot for coming along for the ride. We'll see you next time around.